Hadley owned a corn mill in Gloucester, England. The mill used a steam engine manufactured by W. Joyce & Company, which we'll call Joyce & Company for short, to grind corn into flour and cornmeal. One day, the engine's crankshaft broke. To get the engine running again, Hadley needed to ship the broken shaft back to Joyce & Company so an exact replica of the part could be made as a replacement. Hadley contacted Pickford & Company, or Pickford, a common carrier owned by Baxendale. Hadley paid Pickford to ship the broken shaft to Joyce & Company as quickly as possible. Pickford promised to deliver the part by the next day. However, due to Pickford's negligence, the delivery took much longer than promised. As a result, the mill remained closed for five additional days. Hadley sued Baxendale for breach of contract and asked the court for damages, including his lost profits from the five days the mill was closed. At trial, Baxendale argued that the lost profits were unrelated to the shipping contract and shouldn't be awarded. The jury sided with Hadley, and the lower court ordered Baxendale to pay for the mill's lost profits. Baxendale argued that the lower court judge's instructions misdirected the jury, leading the jurors to reach an unjust conclusion. So Baxendale asked for a new trial. The Court of Exchequer Chamber agreed to review the case. The issue was whether a party that breaches a contract must pay for all damages that result from the breach, even if some of those damages are unforeseeable. The Exchequer Chamber held that a breaching party is only liable for damages that were reasonably foreseeable at the time the contract was made. Therefore, Baxendale wasn't liable for the lost profits. This is because when Hadley hired Pickford to ship the broken shaft, Pickford had no reason to know that the mill would lose revenue if shipment was delayed. It was true that Pickford did, in fact, breach the contract by failing to deliver the shaft as quickly as it promised, and that delay directly caused Hadley's lost profits. Nevertheless, Pickford had no reason to know it was causing that kind of damage. Hadley asked Pickford to ship the shaft as soon as possible, but he didn't specifically say that his mill would remain closed until the shaft was delivered. Customers often ask carriers to ship packages quickly. This statement alone wasn't enough to alert Pickford of the possibility for lost profits. After all, as the court pointed out, the mill may have had a spare shaft to use in the meantime. Because Pickford had no reason to foresee Hadley's lost revenue, the court concluded that Baxendale wasn't liable for the lost profits. Instead, Baxendale could only be liable for the damages that were reasonably foreseeable. The Exchequer Chamber ordered a new trial and advised the lower court to instruct the jury to exclude any damages that were unforeseeable at the time the contract was made when estimating the total damages from the breach. The English case of Hadley v. Baxendale had a very strong influence on the development of American contract law. The principle that contract damages must be limited to those reasonably foreseeable at the time of contracting ultimately became a well-known staple in the common law of the United States.